So it became a thing where it wasn't a celebration of that good thing that I did in my life, it was me being taken the piss out of her. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV shows that returned and failed. I used to date a pussycat doll. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at British TV shows that went away for a while, only to unceremoniously return, getting huge backlash. Let us know in the comments which show you think should have stayed dead and buried. Number 10. The Crystal Maze Originally fronted by the wonderfully weird Richard O'Brien, The Crystal Maze had an enduring impact, though it was only on screens for six years. A skill? A skill. Come on, young Andrew. Okay. Members of the public are thrown together to solve notoriously tricky puzzles in the hope of winning some prizes. Following a successful one-off special in 2016, Channel 4 put together a revival hosted by Richard Ayoade. Only now, many of the contestants were celebrities. You got it, you got it. You got this, you got this. Yeah. Where's this come from, this you got this? The trend of rebooting game shows with celebrities instead of ordinary people is one we hope stops soon, and the revived Crystal Maze eventually lost its audience and found itself canned in 2021. But Ayoade still gets props for being a great host. Number 9. Utopia Where is Jessica Hyde? There's nothing better than when a popular British show gets an American reboot, except for literally anything else, that is. That was Utopia's doomed fate after the cult hit was axed in 2014 when an American remake slash reboot entered production hell. It didn't air until 2020, but became the victim of extremely bad timing. What have you done today to earn your place in this crowded world? It turns out that in the midst of a pandemic rife with conspiracy theories, lots of people weren't interested in a TV series entirely about globetrotting clandestine plots to spread diseases and gain control of the world. If only the Utopia comic was real, then we would have seen this coming. Number 8. Bullseye 19 19 And treble 19 yeah! and Where else could you use your skills at darts to win a tacky carriage clock or an electric knitting machine? During its original run in the 80s and 90s, Bullseye was notorious for its absurd prize choices and the fact that in some episodes you could go home with a car and in others an encyclopedia set like those are equivalent things. Together with a padded blues on and contrasting knitwear, while Colette's right up to date in this 60s style check tunic jacket. Bullseye was truly a product of its time, which is probably why it didn't do so well when there was an attempted reboot in 2006, now with Dave Spikey in the driver's seat. In fact, the prizes were actually worth less in 2006 than they were in the 80s. Oh, that's oh. very unfortunate. Sorry, you'll lose your turn, Brian. We're going to have to move on. Number 7. Primeval it was meant to be ITV's answer to the popular Doctor Who reboot, a show about temporal rifts and time-travelling dinosaurs wreaking havoc on modern Britain. Dinner. But though it was popular when it debuted, it wasn't able to maintain a high enough viewership for ITV to be satisfied. It started to go down the drain in Series 3 and eventually got itself cancelled not helped by ITV sometimes airing it in Doctor Who's time slot. It was followed up only a year later by a British-Canadian spin-off. Listen to my advice. Just leave it alone. Unfortunately, going across the pond didn't give the series the boost it needed, and that version only lasted for 13 episodes because absolutely nobody watched it. Number 6. TFI Friday Good evening and welcome to Friday Nights Live here on Channel 4. From now on at 6 o'clock, this is the place to be. During its initial run, TFI Friday was the show to tune into on a Friday night. There was something about the atmosphere in the studio that got everyone excited for the weekend, and with Chris Evans in his prime at the time, this was a winning formula. The one thing I noticed is you're always putting your fingers in your mouth, or you're doing it again. <laughs> well, personal problems eventually got in the way and the show stopped airing. That was until Evans made his grand return in 2015 with the revived series, which seemed promising with its pilots. 
Sadly, the late night talk show scene was already dominated by the likes of Jonathan Ross and Graham Norton by this time, and the revival only lasted two months. Ouch. It's okay to make grown ups cry, it's fine. Number five, Dad's Army. For nine years, we were treated to the antics of Britain's inept home guard during the Second World War, where the real threat wasn't the Nazis, but the higher up members of the British Army. I'm quite sure this isn't just a, a passing fancy. Oh no, it's definitely not a passing fancy. Dad's Army remained popular throughout its run and had a legacy that seemingly couldn't be tarnished, until it got a film adaptation in 2016. Who was asking for a Dad's Army reboot movie franchise? Well, that's not exactly clear, and the film never got too much fanfare or attention. What on earth is the matter? Oh, I'm not sure what you mean, sir. It may have boasted huge names like Bill Nye and Michael Gambon, even adding a female character in the form of Catherine Zeta-Jones for some reason, but it was a resounding flop. Number 4. Sherlock Notorious for taking large gaps between its seasons, Sherlock was set to make a comeback after an extended hiatus in 2017. You're a doctor. In fact, you're an army doctor. Yes. Already, fans had been dropping off thanks to Stephen Moffat refusing to explain how Sherlock survived the fall in Series 3, but some were still holding out hope. Unfortunately, Series 4 of Sherlock was so bad that a conspiracy theory developed online that there must be a secret final episode that would fix everything. The game is on. This turned out not to be the case. Sherlock deteriorated so significantly, even its most dedicated fans couldn't believe it was of such poor quality by the end. That's what we call going out with a whimper. She's very clever. I'm beginning to think you're not. Number 3. The Inbetweeners Another wildly popular sitcom, The Inbetweeners, hasn't fared too well since it left the small screen. Is this a joke? Though the first movie remains hugely popular and iconic, the second left something to be desired. But that was nothing compared to the disastrous reunion special thrown together in 2019, presented by Jimmy Carr, because what isn't these days? Far from being a scripted reunion like people wanted, it was the show's cast and some famous fans just reminiscing about what they liked about it, showing a few clips, and handing out a series of bizarre and pointless awards. They're now going to be playing for their very own state-of-the-art Yellow Fiat Hawaii. <laughs> James Buckley even apologised for the reunion after it aired. I was just as disappointed as everyone else when that thing came out. Number 2. Top Gear Technically, Top Gear never really went off the air, but it did disappear for a while to lick its wounds after the departures of Clarkson, Hammond and May. You're on the way to Bangladesh. After Clarkson was sacked for punching one of the production crew, the others walked in solidarity, and the show took a long time to find its feet again. Welcome to Top Gear. With Chris Evans at the helm, it was widely lambasted by the press and public. Years later, and we have Freddie Flintoff and Paddy McGuinness who, while a major improvement over Evans and Matt LeBlanc, still don't have the magic of the original trio. And with the Grand Tour now to compete with, Top Gear's days might be numbered. Good luck with that. Number 1. Spitting Image it was once a highly controversial, biting satire of the British establishment lampooning everyone from Margaret Thatcher to the royal family, something a lot of people didn't take too kindly to. The Queen. Good evening, boys! Then it was announced to be making a return exclusively on Britbox, the streaming service of the BBC and ITV. Where's she happen? More is happen. The problem was that the world has moved on from spitting image. Despite the quick turnaround, the episodes end up no longer topical thanks to the internet meaning the news cycle is faster than ever. As well as that, the satire itself is spineless, taking cheap shots at Adele and Lewis Hamilton rather than actually trying to be proactive or interesting. Would you be able to erase somebody's son's internet history? Are you inviting me home for coffee? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.